When the Ark of the Covenant is publicly revealed, it will be put into one of the tabernacle replicas that has already been built, Michael Snyder reports. Did you know that two life-size replicas of the tabernacle have already been constructed in Israel? One is in the Timna Valley near Israel's southernmost city of Eilat, and the other one is located in the Eshel HaShomron Hotel near the city of Ariel in Samaria. Both of these structures already contain replicas of the Ark of the Covenant. Of course, those that created both of these life-size models of the tabernacle insist that they are only to be used for educational purposes, but could that change at some point in the future? After all, once the Ark of the Covenant is revealed to the world, it will need a home. After the original temple was destroyed in 586 BC, the Ark of the Covenant entirely disappeared from the history books. There is no historical record that says that the Babylonians captured the Ark, and no Babylonian leader ever claimed that it was in Babylon. But the Ark of the Covenant was not present in the Second Temple either. And so that indicates that those that built it also did not know where it was located. So what in the world happened to it? Personally, he says, I've become, I've become convinced that it is still in a chamber under the city of Jerusalem where it was hidden prior to the Babylonian invasion. On the official website of the Temple Institute, it's clearly stated that the Temple Institute knows exactly where this hidden chamber is located. While some claim to have evidence that the Ark is in Ethiopia, and of course moviegoers were treated to a fanciful version of the story in Raiders of the Lost Ark, in reality the expression Lost Ark is not an accurate description for the Jewish people's point of view because we have always known exactly where it is. So the Ark is hidden, and hidden quite well, but it is not lost. Tradition records that even as King Solomon built the first temple, he already knew, through divine inspiration, that eventually it would be destroyed. Thus Solomon, the wisest of all men, oversaw the construction of a vast system of labyrinths, mazes, chambers, and corridors underneath the Temple Mount complex. He commanded that a special place be built in the bowels of the earth, where the sacred vessels of the Temple could be hidden in case of approaching danger. Midrashic tradition teaches that King Josiah of Israel, who lived about 40 years before the destruction of the first temple, commanded the Levites to hide the ark, together with the original menorah and several other items, in this secret hiding place which Solomon had prepared. The location is recorded in our sources, and today there are those who know exactly where this chamber is, and we know that the ark is still there, undisturbed and waiting for the day when it will be revealed. An attempt was made some few years ago to excavate towards the direction of this chamber. This resulted in widespread Muslim unrest in writing. They stand a great deal to lose if the Ark is revealed, for it will prove that the whole world, to the whole world that there really was a holy temple, and thus that the Jews really do have a claim to the Temple Mount, the official position of the Islamic Waqf, the body that governs over the Temple Mount, is that there never was a holy temple and that the Jews have no rights whatsoever to the place. There are lots of other experts that have all sorts of bizarre theories about where the Ark of the Covenant could be today, but for any of those theories to be true, the Temple Institute has to be lying. Personally, I believe that they are telling the truth. In 1982, Rabbi Yehuda Getz reported reportedly came within 40 feet of this secret chamber. Rabbi Getz believes that, believes that in 1982 he was very close, within 40 feet, to finding the cave in which the Ark resides. He was conducting a search in an old tunnel that had been filled with the debris of centuries, which runs perpendicular to the western wall, and under the Temple Mount, however, when the Muslims discovered that there were digging being, uh, diggings being conducted under the Dome of the Rock, they threatened, to, they threatened a general riot and the diggings were stopped. The rabbi explained that for the sake of maintaining peace with their Muslim neighbors, the Israelis had to reseal the, the entrance to the tunnel and it remains blocked up to this day. This is almost certainly the episode that the Temple Institute is referring to on their website. 
1982, it was not time for the Ark to be revealed. But I believe that the time when it will be revealed is getting very close. Interestingly, there is an ancient document called Treatise for the Vessels that claims that the Ark of the Covenant will not be revealed, quote, until the day of the coming of the Messiah, end quote. One text called the Treatise of the Vessels says that the Ark shall not be revealed until the day of the coming of the Messiah of David, the son of David. Is this the generation that will see the return of the Lord Jesus? Yes, and as I detailed my book entitled Chaos, I am convinced that this is also the generation when the discovery of the Ark of the Covenant will shock the entire globe. Right now, two life-size replicas of the tabernacle in which the Ark of the Covenant once stood currently exist in the island in the land of Israel, but both of them are, quote, for educational purposes and are not for functional, end quote. The holy tabernacle housing the presence of the God of Israel, once carried by the ancient Israelites, no longer exists. However, since the Jews have reclaimed their ancestral homeland in Israel, they reconstructed two replicas of this legendary religious structure. It should be noted these replicas are displayed for educational purposes and are not functional, they said. The replicas of the tabernacle that is most well known is in southern Israel, close to the city of Eilat. The Timna tabernacle, first displayed in Switzerland during the 1990s before returning to Israel, now stands in the scenic Timna Valley in the southern, southern Israeli desert near Eilat, adjacent to the ancient copper mines often associated with King Solomon. Set against the desert backdrop, it offers an accurate and authentic reconstruction reminiscent of the Israelites' tabernacle during their desert journey, matching the dimensions and features described in the Bible. Inside, visitors can explore exact replicas of various elements, including the altar, copper sink, table of showbread, menorah, the seven branches candelabrum, the small altar for incense, Ark of the Covenant, priestly vestments, and more. The other one is located at the Eshal Hashomron Hotel in the city of Ariel. The biblical park at the Eshal Hashomron Hotel in Ariel, Samaria, inaugurated in 2014, shows a life-size replica of the Tabernacle of Shiloh from the biblical period of the Judges, distinguishing it from the one at Timna. The garden features interactive stations such as a miniature Jordan River owned by Oh, the only Jewish hotel in Samaria, this replica offers insight into the tabernacle during the settled period of the Israelites under the judges, particularly during Samuel's time. Tourists who are interested in delving deeper are encouraged to visit the ancient Shiloh archaeological site before or after exploring the tabernacle at Eshel HaShomron. At Shiloh, archaeologists have discovered what they believe to be the location of the tabernacle during Samuel's childhood. When the Ark of the Covenant is finally revealed to the world, it could go into one of the, these models of the tabernacle. To a lot of people, that would seem to make sense. But I don't think this is likely to happen. When the Ark of the Covenant is finally revealed, it will instantly become a major target for terrorists. So I think that it's far more likely that the Ark will be, dis will be placed in an extremely secure facility that is deep underground. Of course, many would argue that it's already an extremely secure place since nobody has been able to get to the chamber where it is located all these years. We live in such an exciting time. Major archaeological discoveries are constantly being made, but since they aren't getting that much attention, a lot of people don't know about them. For example, the secret tomb that contains at least 12 human skeletons was just discovered under the ancient city of Petra at the heart of the ancient city of Petra, Jordan, carved into pink sandstone cliffs lies an elaborate monument known as the Kazna or the Treasury, and buried beneath that edifice, archaeologists recently discovered in a tomb, is a tomb with at least 12 human skeletons and artifacts that are estimated to be at least 2,000 years old. Archaeologists led by Dr. Pierce Paul Kreisman, executive director of the American Center for Research, unearthed the ancient tomb, the expedition was studied, studying the treasury after years of speculation that two tombs found below the left side of the monument in 2003 
were not the only secret underground chambers, but the theory had not been confined until now, confirmed until now. And that was a mind-blowing discovery, but hardly anyone has heard about it. And more mind-blowing discoveries are coming. I believe that the Ark of the Covenant will be publicly revealed in our generation. When it happens, it will be the greatest archaeological bombshell of all time. So let's watch for any mention of the Ark in the news, because they won't be able to keep a lid on where it's currently located for, such, for too much longer. This is by Michael Snyder on End of the American Dream. Please leave your comments and thank you for your support. About the author, Michael Snyder's new book, Why, is available on paperback and for Kindle on Amazon. He's also written eight other books available on Amazon, including Chaos, End Times, Seven Year Apocalypse, Lost Prophets of the Future of America, The Beginning of the End and Living a Life That Really Matters. When you purchase any of Michael's books, you help to support the work that he's doing. You can also get his articles by email as soon as he publishes them by subscribing to his Substack newsletter. Michael has published thousands of articles on the Economic Collapse blog, End of the American Dream and the Most Important News, and he always freely, happily allows others to republish those articles on their own websites. These are such troubled times and people need hope. John 3.16 tells us about the hope that God has given us through Jesus Christ. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. If you have not already done so, we strongly urge you to invite you to, uh, to, to invite Jesus Christ to be your Lord and Savior today. Please leave your comments and thank you for your support. I support my Patreon account. The daily posts are five videos daily and they are totally different from what I have on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your support and that you find all my content so interesting. You'll find the Patreon account details in the description box below.